So it's really easy to question why am I training the tricep muscles and if you're a competition climber or particularly a boulder where you can do any sort of pressing or mantling movements firstly it's really really crucial that you develop these muscles because you'll end up getting to the top of a climb and just not being able to finish. Hi, I'm Ollie Till and welcome to another episode of our Lattice Training Series. In this episode we're going to use weights again and I'm going to be looking at developing your pushing muscles, particularly your chest, anterior deltoids and your tricep muscles. A lot of climbers tend to neglect these and it ends up coming up in certain movements where they really struggle to either push out from a hold or mantle on the top of a boulder or being able to press out in a competition problem. So this is a really good area to train and this routine is something that I found extremely useful for climbers. And once again, I'm not training you as an Olympic lifting athlete, I'm not training you to become better at weightlifting, I'm training you to become a better climber and that's what's most important for me. So the first exercise of this routine is using a very simple bench press. And as you can see behind me, I've got the setup ready. I would really recommend using safety bars most of the time just because you don't want to be that person at the gym who is dropping the bar onto their chest and having to climb out from under it. So try and keep safety bars there even if it means it restricts your movement a little bit. And the best recommendation I could do for this exercise is to do it with someone else and have a partner there because those reps where you're just about pushing out and they can just slightly lift it up for you makes a huge difference to your overall training stimulus. So try and do it with a partner if you can. So nice and simple, bench press, chest to bar, all the way back to straight. A couple of tips for you as climbers is what it tends to is a lot of people have really narrow grip position if they're not used to bench press and what it tends to do is it bends the wrist and it can feel kind of uncomfortable and they can't really produce the power so sometimes just go a little bit wider than you might think and try and keep your wrist relatively straight. Around shoulder width or a tiny bit wider is a good, good example there. The other thing is when you're putting the bar back on is don't be delicate about it. Everyone always tries to hook the bar on really slowly and you're starting to get a bit shaky anyway. So just kind of make sure that you become comfortable throwing the bar back onto the, the rack behind you. And I guess lastly is making sure that you're trying to keep good form throughout. So keep your feet planted and try not to allow any sort of wobble going on. Because if you're not used to this movement, it can feel a little bit daunting as the weights are starting to go up. This might be a quite a controversial point, but a lot of people always ask me how much weight they should be able to bench press as a good climber. Personally, I think around 100% body weight for male or female climbers is a good standard to get to. Going beyond that, I think is definitely useful. But if you're hitting 200%, then I think after that point, you need to be looking at other training methods to help your improvement as a climber. If you want to become a powerlifter, go to town and get to 300% if you can. So if you don't have a bench press setup, and particularly the barbell in particular, what can you do in a, as an alternative? A really simple method is just to use two dumbbells and go for simple chest flies. So that's going to be bringing the, bar, uh, the dumbbells to either side of your body. Try not to go too low and then pushing it back up above your head. Like I said, it's very uh, similar movement and it's something that will train the sort of same muscles in the same way. It's not quite the same uh, because you're using like a moving plane, uh, two different moving objects, but it's still a good alternative. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is a lot of people will tend to bring the dumbbells really low. And what I'd like to see is that you only go down to sort of in parallel with your shoulders and your chest, because if you're doing this too far, you're gonna really stretch out your shoulder. And if you're not used to that as a climber and you're quite tight, that can cause issues later down the line. So the next exercise in this routine is looking at an inclined shoulder press. And the reason we're doing this is we've just done a bench press, which is on a flat bench or chest flies if you had to use an alternative. And what we're gonna be looking at is doing the plane of motion, going straight above sort of nipple height 
and across your chest. Now what we're going to do is get our arms going above our head slightly. That's going to involve our anterior deltoids a lot more and the top part of our chest. And when you think about the climbing positions that you're going to be in and you're holding holds above your head and trying to compress or even just holding a static position as you're clipping, this is a really good area of the body to start improving. Um, something I found really useful for as well is if you struggle with having undercuts above your head, so taking an undercut like above the head, this is a really good exercise to develop the strength in that specific movement pattern. So incline shoulder press, nice and simple. Two dumbbells, uh, bring it into the position slowly and once again, try not to go too far down at the lower part of the motion. So as you can see at the top part of the movement is I'm going to be having a little bit of a twist so I'm going to get a full range of motion right at the top so when my muscles are already contracted I'm going to get that little bit more range. However on the other end of the spectrum right at the bottom I don't want to go too far down because once again what I found is a lot of climbers that tend to be quite tight on the front of their chest and their shoulders holding load in this really stretched position can become a little bit uncomfortable and start exacerbating any issues around that joint already. So as much as I'm trying to build strength through our large range of motion, if you're looking for strength gains, try to restrict at the bottom part and make sure you make the most of the top part. So the third exercise we're gonna look at in this routine is gonna be looking specifically at the triceps. And there's a couple of ways of doing this, whether it is doing tricep extensions with a cable, below your waist uh, or above your arm with a dumbbell. Uh, the method I quite like is doing a lying down tricep extension above your head. And the reason for that is put in the long head of tricep a little bit more of a stretch so you get a good range of motion, which I tend to find to be really useful and a good transfer to climb in specific movements, particularly when you're looking at mantling. Um, once again, it's using nice simple equipment and I'm going to do it with the barbell now, but you can always do it with dumbbells as well. Just make sure you don't conk yourself on the head in the middle of the movement. So nice and simply lying down. Uh, you're going to put your arms above your head and extend the arms. What we're going to try and do is keep it slightly above your head um, so that it's staying in a position which is more comfortable for the arms and it keeps the arm working. So it's really easy to question why am I training the tricep muscles and if you're a competition climber or particularly a boulder where you're doing any sort of pressing or mantling movements firstly it's really really crucial that you develop these muscles because you'll end up getting to the top of a climb and just not being able to finish. Um, another good reason to do it is you're looking at the holistic package of you as an athlete and if you're constantly developing these pulling muscles they're going to end up being slightly restricted by the strength and the stability of those pushing muscles on the other side of the arm, the antagonist muscles. So it's really important to try and keep remembering to train both sides. Doing a movement like the tricep extension here is another good reason because it's going to be stretching that part of the arm as well. So it's going to be working the full range of motion, which means that it's going to reduce the risk of any sort of tightness that can start building up and making elbow issues further down the line. So the last exercise we're going to look at is kind of still working the chest, and in particular the pec minor, but also it's going to be working the lat muscles as well. The reason I find this really useful is it's going to be contracting the chest in the same sort of movement as you get on a steep terrain or when you're doing any big dynamic movements. So I'm going to be using the barbell to do a pull down. So that's going from above your head to over your head when you're lying in position and then bringing it back down. If you've got a cable machine, you can still use that. And once again, you can use the same with the dumbbells. With a lot of these exercises, it's very easy to just do the movements, but I really want you to focus on squeezing the area of the body that you really want to start training. So in this position, I want you to think about squeezing the chest. And by doing that is you almost want to be twisting your wrists and your elbows towards each other, even though they're stuck on a bar. So it's going to be really engaging those chest muscles throughout. I find this super useful if you're into anything where you're going to be doing uh, very powerful speedy movements. So speed climbers, competition climbers, this is absolutely brilliant for you. Particularly if you're looking at improving mobility in your chest as well and strength throughout the entire range and you're finding that you're starting to become quite hunched over. So I'm thinking of a lot of you climbers that are 
starting to be really good on certain terrain, but then if you try and put your arms above your head, you're kind of restricted. This is a really good movement to improve mobility as well as strength. Once again, start to think about the amount of load you're using. So a barbell is around 20 kilos if you're using a standard barbell. So just make sure that you're able to do that motion in a nice comfortable format with the full range of motion with the correct weight. It's sometimes easy to use it with dumbbells and that might even let you just engage those chest muscles a little bit more. So that's all the exercises in this routine and you'll find that it does work your chest and your tricep and all those pushing muscles in a really good range and I found this to be super useful for a lot of climbers that have ne neglected these sort of muscle groups and this pushing movement for a long period of time. Build up the load slowly, use sets and reps that are appropriate for your goals. If it's looking for more endurance base, higher reps, lower sets. And if you're looking for strength gains, higher loads, lower reps. So hopefully you enjoyed that routine and you're gonna be able to take little aspects of that or try it out yourself. And what I'd like to do is in the description below, I'll include a load of sets and reps and a routine so that you can try it out. And that'll be developing either strength and strength endurance, but it'll give you exactly the right amount to get going and give this a go. Once again, if you're ever unsure about any exercise or you're finding the intensity is a little bit difficult, just try and talk to a professional in person so they can check your form and just run through the exercise with you. Once again, like and subscribe and put any comments below and we'll try and answer as much as we can and I'll see you in the next episode.